Hello there, you little demons. Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval themed format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you. Yes, you, the person who is, as of right now at 7.30 in the morning, very, very, very tired. And also my eyelids are really swollen today. I don't know why, I think it's the meds that I'm on. I know that you don't need to know this, but still, in case you're wondering why I look so very puffy, it's because I am. Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And this week we have none others of eight, man. <laughs> screaming Tongue. That is Screaming Tongue. For their suggestion of video games that just hold your bloody hand way too much. Where tutorials just go on for so long and tell you such intricate details that you just go, I know, I know how to breathe. Do I actually know how to breathe? Oh no, I've started thinking about it and it's getting harder again. Cut away, cut away, Dan, cut away. Although the onboarding process for any game is vitally important, the games that we're going to be talking about today all went overboard with it, hovering over the player like an anxious helicopter parent and refusing to just let them make a mistake or two. Now, much as developers obviously don't want players to bounce off their games in frustration, there is indeed a balance, and these games all categorically whiffed it by guiding the players a little too eagerly down a well-trodden path. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video games that hold your hand way, way too much. And you know the drill by now, put your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comment section below. But with that in mind, shall we get on with the list? Shall we, Dan? Yes? I'm hearing a resounding yes. Yes, yes, we should. <laughs> Number eight, Horizon Forbidden West. Now, spoiler alert, this isn't going to be the only first-party Sony game that we're going to see on this list, so buckle up, friends. Horizon Forbidden West is a totally rock-solid sequel that nevertheless does not trust the player to do a single solitary thing without Aloy offering up a snappy verbal reminder. The moment you walk into just about any room where you'll be required to exert even the most basic mental energy on exploration or puzzle solving, Aloy will freely offer up some unsolicited verbal hints. And when I say hints, what I really mean is, is that she tells you exactly what you need to do in every single circumstance. Thank you for taking the agency out of a video game experience. I really enjoy that. I love it when you walk into a room with a puzzle and you think to yourself, hmm, okay, this might actually, oh, she's literally just telling me to move this block over here. Cool. I love being a backseat passenger in my own game. It's one of gaming's most egregious recent examples of the player character nudging the player into the backseat and basically taking control of the game. And the complaints were ultimately vocal enough that Guerrilla Games eventually released a patch which made Aloy a little less talkative. Guerrilla Games, so giving the option to silence women. Ooh, this, this, is, this is not the turn I expected this list to take, I'm telling you this. Number seven, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. So ever since in 2007 that Call of Duty was reimagined for a new age of gamers, unfortunately one of the things that we got in exchange for outstanding graphics and amazing set pieces was a lot of linearity. It basically just reduced all of the player agency to follow this, go here, shoot that, you idiot. And don't get me wrong, it's fun. But once you start noticing it, ooh, it's a bit dumb. But there was one game above all others which invited an avalanche of ridicule from the wider gaming community, and that was 2014's Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Even accepting that the game marked a major, divisive leap into sci-fi territory for the series, there's a moment early on in the campaign which left even the most die-hard Call of Duty fan guffawing with second-hand embarrassment. And you know which bit I'm talking about. It was the press F to pay respects. And just... Ah, that, that... It went viral on social media for all of the wrong reasons. I mean, seriously, press F to pay respect. It's still quoted today in some comment sections. And it's highlighting as an example of just how excessively on rails the Call of Duty campaigns now are. Could the player not have simply been encouraged to walk towards Will's casket, at which point the game could wrestle control away from them for the ensuing cutscene? Instead, what we got was an interactive cutscene that was anything but. There was no option to do anything else apart from just stand there and wonder, why is the game making me do this? Why is the game making me feel like I have control over something, something so, so ridiculous? Number six, Forza Motorsport 2023. Now the newly released Forza Motorsport, and don't you dare call it Forza Motorsport, hate, we're not doing that, all right, is as you would expect from a game of this franchise. It looks absolutely stunning. The vehicles are absolutely lovely to handle, but unfortunately, the opening hour of this game is, without a doubt, an utter slog. 
The racing game begins with a lengthy, unskippable tutorial which painstakingly acquaints the player with almost every aspect of gameplay and forces them to sit through bloated, overly talky cutscenes, no matter that many of those playing the 8th mainline Forza title will know exactly what they're doing. Hell, I don't even play racing games and I even know that you just go, car go, car go! and maybe slow, turn corner, go, 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 that's it, that, I, I've just explained the entire premise of Forza to you, and I, can, and I can show you exactly what I'd be doing if I was holding the controller, which I've got right here, actually, car, go, and that's it, oh, turn left, that's it, now, I'm just going to say here, this isn't an elitist battle cry for Turn 10 to ditch the tutorials altogether. I mean, they are fine for those who need them, but for seasoned players who know what's up, holding their hand for close to an hour, well, it gets the game off to a positively yawn-inducing start. It isn't until players have beaten their first racing event in the Builder's Cup that the game truly opens up and the relentless, tiresome, stodgy tutorialization finally calms down. And listen, I'm no video game designer, but I'm pretty sure I could come up with a way to circumnavigate all of this hassle, and that is, a little box pops up that just says, have you played Forza before? Yes, no. Yes, skips all of that. Done. Thank you very much. Checks in the post, is it? Cheers, mates. Number five, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, ahead of Star Wars Battlefront 2's release, EA couldn't stop banging on about the game's cinematic campaign mode, which they promised would satisfy fans disappointed that the previous Battlefront didn't have one to speak of. But here's the thing, what they actually delivered us was a cinematic, and I should have put that in heavier quotation marks there, four-hour campaign that basically just moves you from corridor to open room to corridor to open room and tasks you with the same three tasks over and over again. It wasn't great, is what I'm trying to say, but more importantly, God damn, was it boring, man. And it also can't help but seem even more of a hand-holding mess in light of EA's richer recent Star Wars Jedi games. Despite the impressive amount of money and effort that clearly went into the campaign's glossy cutscenes, the gameplay fundamentals are about as fun and interesting as rearranging your sock drawer on a lazy afternoon. Definitely avoid. Number 4. Pokemon Sun and Moon Bing, bang, bong, ba, boom, boom, boom. That is me firing my, uh, there they are again. Nintendo guns. Uh, they're back again. And, uh, they're here with Pokemon Sun and Moon with a tutorial that is so bad, so aggravating to get through that I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't blame many people for bouncing off the entire franchise altogether. Yeah, it's that bad. Pokemon Sun and Moon makes you wait about an hour to get your starter Pokemon, while relentlessly inundating you with cutscenes and chit-chat text, often while only giving you back control for a few seconds in between them. It is absolutely maddening, and while Pokemon has never been a hardcore franchise, this molasses slow start straight up murders the game's pacing before it can build to anything close to actual honest-to-god momentum. And there's good reason to think that if you are a Pokemon fan, then you've likely played Pokemon for about 10 years or so at this point, so you know most of the basics pretty much like you could recite them from, from start to finish. So the fact that you've got to wait an hour to get into the game to begin again, yeah, that's not fun. No especially seeing as all of it is completely unskippable. Time is a precious resource for any adult, and there comes a point where a game refusing to let go of your hand becomes suffocating to the point that the game is not actually worth playing at all anymore. Number 3. Resident Evil 6 Thank you, thank you very much for coming to my TED Talk. Uh, I will now begin my presentation on why Resident Evil 6 is the worst video game out of the entire franchise. Okay, are we going to begin? Um, all of it. Just all of it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Thank you very much. Any questions? No, pretty, pretty, pretty concise. I, I realize that. Cheers. Bye. Amid the chaos, you're forced to babysit Helena through most of the prologue, gorge yourself on QTEs until you're absolutely sick of them, take a hilariously basic course in herbology, and very, very occasionally fend off some zombies. And on top of this, there's the game's generally overpowering linearity and hideous objective markers, which ensure that there's never any opportunity for you to be steered wrong, and it instantly makes the action-packed Resident Evil 6 a less anxious experience than its predecessors. In short, it couldn't be more of a polar opposite to everything that fans had come to expect before that. And yes, I know what you're going to say, Resident Evil 5 set the groundwork for it, but 5 is an infinitely better game than 6. Prove me wrong. Apart from that one mode in Resident Evil 6 that I did like where you could pretend to be a zombie, that actually was fun. I'll give them that. I'll give them that. One thing, though, out of a million others. Number 2. God of War Ragnarok 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Put your bitch forks down. I know, I probably already annoyed the Resident Evil fan base by talking about Resident Evil 6 and how shoddy it is, but I'm now going to annoy the Sony fanboys as well by talking about uh, God of War Ragnarok. But please, let me explain before you skewer my spleen, please, I beg you. So now we're going to talk about Sony's other big first-party hand-holdy offender, which is the otherwise brilliant God of War Ragnarok, which has been dinged ever since release for the tendency for young boy over here to blurt out puzzle solutions before you've even had a moment to take in the area. If you've got a younger sibling, it's tough not to be reminded of them trying to backseat game you whilst playing a game in your youth, refusing to give you the opportunity to work things out with your own bloody brain in bloody peace. Hell, even Atreus' own vocal performer expressed disdain for hearing his voice again and again and again in the game. So not even they like it! And number one, Tomb Raider 2013 and Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, the original run of Tomb Raider games was basically like a litmus test for players, because they would come along, they'd be presented with a puzzle or a giant room in order to traverse across and just be told, have at it, go for it, figure it out yourself. And that was part of the fun because it actually felt like you were exploring things where Lara just was like, well, I don't instantly know how to do this because I've never seen this before. So what do you think they changed when it came to the reboots? Hmm. Because yes, Crystal Dynamics' is, 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 is reboot trilogy felt like something of a reaction to this, an attempt to casualize the experience and ensure that the new batch of games would appeal to those who dug the more linear-minded Uncharted titles. Yet, the hardcore Tomb Raider set ultimately felt that the developer overcorrected, with not only Lara's constant chatter guiding the player along, but also the overabundance of white paint directing the player where to go at almost all times, neither of which could be turned off in the first two games. Thankfully, the developer at least introduced more gradual difficulty settings for the third game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which allowed players to fine-tune combat, puzzle, and exploration difficulties separately, in turn allowing them to remove both the white paint and Lara's verbal hints. But still, silencing women aside, being able to remove the white paint actually is quite a nice touch. I would actually much prefer that to be included in more games, especially Resident Evil 4's remake, because there was a whole thing going on about this. Probably the impetus of why this list came out. But anyway, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video games that hold your hand way too much. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on the social medias over here, and you can follow my Dan, the lovely editor Dan, over on his social medias over here as well. Well, but before I go, I just want to say one thing, my friend. Even though we spoke today about video games that hold your hand way too much, let's give each other a helping hand in the comments thread and in our day-to-day -day life by being kind to ourselves and our neighbor. Let's try to build bridges instead of burning them because trust me, the way that things are going in society, the only way we're going to get through this is together, all right? So be kind to yourself and kind to others because... Oh boy, we're going to need some help in hands coming down the line. Trust me on that one. As always, I've been Jules. Hope that you're doing well. Treating yourself with love and respect because you bloody well deserve the best. And I'll see you next time here on Choose Your Own Adventure. Bye.